A groundbreaking birth. In 1978, a baby born to an English couple was born. Louise Brown became the first baby to be conceived via in vitro fertilization. IVF created quite a stir at the time among medical professionals, churches, and politicians. Currently, infertility affects one in seven couples with more than seven million women seeking fertility treatments. Each year, more than 60,000 babies are born in the U.S. from IVF. So joining us today, Medical Director at Bios Fertility Institute in Chicago, Dr. Angie Beltos. And here she is, the world's first IVF baby, now a mother herself. Thank you so much. You. So you've written a book documenting the whole process here. And one of the things I find so interesting is that you call your parents, and of course the doctors who help them, pioneers. Talk to me about that because I know they faced a lot of backlash and a lot of negativity. Yeah, um, mum actually went to the doctors with depression um, in the beginning through not being able to become pregnant. Um, I believe they tried for about 10 years. Um, so when they um, found out that the underlying was um, depression because mum wasn't getting pregnant, um, her doctor referred her to see Patrick Steptoe, um, the gynecologist up in Manchester. Um, and they had to go through an appointment and um, go up and meet Patrick and um, basically to see if they were suitable for the treatment. Um, Mum didn't realise it hadn't worked, it hadn't worked before. Um, he was a gynaecologist, so there was mums and babies going to and from his um, practice all the time. So she just believed it would work, and it did, and I think that helped her quite a bit. Now, you were special, clearly, from the time you were born, but that wasn't always easy for you. It was fairly challenging as you were growing up. Yeah, um, the press were quite intrusive when I was beginning school. Um, Mum and Dad pulled me out of the spotlight just so that I could have a normal schooling um, with all my friends. Um, the years before, we did tours of America, we did um, Japan, um, so I was sort of been all around the world all before my fourth birthday. So I think when I started school at four, they thought, no, the world's seen she's normal, um, and they pulled me out of the spotlight so I could get my education. And now you're back in the spotlight helping Dr. Beltos get the word out about how positive this can be and really how far the science has come. Can you talk to us about that? Well, it is an amazing event that, imagine the courage that it took to, to do that kind of treatment and where it has sort of catapulted us forward that there's a whole medical field now based on the fact that you're here with us and have inspired professionals and patients um, and has really touched so many lives that I think uh, it's truly, truly a miracle, but it's also a blend of the miracle of life with science and, and medical technology. And helping not only infertile couples, but women who have cancer, who can freeze their eggs, right. but also the technology has increased in such a way where you can make sure that babies aren't going to be born with disease. Mm -hmm. Yet the critics say, wait, we're creating designer babies. How do you respond to that? Well, there are a lot of different ways to help someone have a healthy baby. And as you pointed out, doing pre-implantation genetic testing of embryos, you can identify conditions like Down syndrome or diseases that the child may not survive ahead of time. But like everything, there's important balances and lines to be drawn that we don't want to create the designer baby, but still help people have a healthy child and a healthy family. Absolutely. And then you struggled with some infertility issues yourself when you were trying to get pregnant and, and having difficulty. So you know the value in this. Yeah, I mean, it took me, I was on the pill injection for a number of years before, um, and it took me two and a half years. Um, I think that's just naturally my body and how my system worked. And then once I was pregnant, things progressed and they were fine. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's just life and I mean, I'm so grateful for Patrick and Bob and Mum and Dad 
for creating my life and I believe there's over six million of us now. Yes. It's such an interesting topic and everyone is coming together. The event that we were talking about is this Midwest Reproductive Symposium. The International Public Day is this Saturday, June 17th at the Drake Hotel. If you want more information, you can visit MidwestReproductionSymposium.org. We'll also have a link on our webpage as well at WGNTV.com slash midday. Thank you, ladies. Thank you. Thank you.